Welcome to the show. This is Christian United Broadcasting Network coming to you live from Edmond, Oklahoma, USA. Still the land of the free and the home of the bright. Glory to the King. You know, we're going to talk about the status of the world prophetically and what is coming next. I've been doing some brainstorming. <laughs> Oh, first, I got to tell you something. <laughs> Do not adjust your television. <laughs> My hair actually is gray. <laughs> it's been wreaking havoc with Troy's technology. <laughs> Three weeks ago, it was blonde. <laughs> After taking this medicine, it turned it gray. I, I didn't even know it until... Uh, we did the show yesterday. <laughs> it, it's it's true. It has the the medicine, the antibiotic they gave me has turned the color of my hair. <laughs> I know it, it's crazy. Anyway, it, it's not your imagination, and it's. And when you see my hair kind of disappear on the screen, it's because the color is wreaking havoc with Troy's technology. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't know what to do about it. I'll just have to talk to my hairdresser. I've never had this happen before, ever in my life. <laughs> For my hair to change color because of, uh, the only thing it could be is that medicine they gave me. Now, I, I haven't done anything else different, but it's, it's totally changed color from root to ends. <laughs> It's it's gray now. It's not even a pretty silver. It's a a yucky gray. <laughs> Anywho, uh, you know, no vanity issues there. I guess are going to be able to creep up on me. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's. You know, I've been thinking really hard about these things that are about to happen because we can tell in the media that we've got. The war rhetoric rhetoric is really increasing. It's getting into levels where you know at some point something's got to give. So I've been looking to see what the deal is with these wars and what to expect from them. Now, it looks like we've got three conflicts ahead, at least three specific uh, conflicts, wars are bad, but let's talk about it. Okay, now we've got a, an Arab war where the armies gather around Jerusalem. We have uh, an aggression from the north where you have Russia, Iran, Turkey, Hezbollah, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then you've got Armageddon. Now, I've been figure, trying to figure out the timing on these. And what I've concluded here is that we know from the scripture, and let's get over here to it, that when the armies come past Jerusalem, when the armies are gathered around Jerusalem, the desolation thereof is nigh. So I'm going to, let me get, let me find that for you. And the desolation would be the defiling of the temple. Let me pull this up. Now the, the timing is, is interesting because it tells us Which one comes first? And so I was looking at this and I was thinking, that's cool, my king, because I, it, it makes all the pieces fit together. Okay. So let me look here in, I believe it is in Luke 21, 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now that's surrounded by armies. Jerusalem surrounded by armies. Now that's the Arab conflict. 
that's the one where armies are going to gather around Jerusalem as they're building the temple. Okay. And we know that that happens while they're building the temple because it says, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the desolation, that's the temple being defiled, thereof is nigh. Okay. So, we know that this Arab conflict comes while they're building the temple. That means it comes after the treaty. But there's a conflict that comes before the treaty as well. And I'm figuring this out. See, when the armies from the north come against Israel, Israel is miraculously saved from that conflict, okay? It's like they come toward Israel from the north like a cloud covering the land. And they are miraculous. Israel is miraculously saved. Those armies from the north perish. And so Israel is miraculously saved in that one. See, the one, when, they, when the midpoint conflict happens the temple's defiled israel has to flee okay so th we're we're trying to get our timing down so it looks like we have to have see when the treaty is signed it's a huge big deal or the agreement whatever you want to call it okay the 7 year agreement that will um be signed between Israel and the Palestinians and probably the Western powers because you don't have Arabs on board with it or else they wouldn't be surrounding Jerusalem while the temple is being rebuilt. You have to, we've got this war from the north, I think, that is coming first because Israel is miraculously saved. They don't have to flee yet. Okay. And once that happens, they're like way wigged out and way grateful that they're still there and they credit the Pope with their salvation. Then there's a treaty because see, you've got to have the people have, are going to be war weary and not just that. It looks like you're going to have first the conflict of Russia coming down toward Israel from the north. And then that will cause an economic meltdown, okay? The repercussions of this war and all those deaths, and it's going to be bad. Uh, Two billion people are going to die in various places here. So you're looking at a situation where Israel enters, well, okay, Russia comes down, God intervenes. Israel's miraculously saved. They credit the false Messiah rather than the true Messiah, which is their, the Antichrist. Okay? They're going to credit him with saving them. Oh, wow, he's their new Messiah kind of thing. Okay? Then that gives him the cloud he needs to broker the treaty. And then after the treaty comes, then they can will start rebuilding the temple. Okay? Then as they're re rebuilding the temple, you've got Arab armies that gather around Jerusalem. Then you'll have the Arab conflict second. And then that one will build. Israel will have to flee. That one will build and it will turn into Armageddon at some point. Okay. Um, and he's giving us all these little pieces and putting them in place for us. Because, you know, I wasn't really sure which conflict came first. The Arab conflict or the conflict from the north. But right now you've got Russia dug in like a tick in Syria. They've got two new military bases. Oh shoot, I forgot to bring those dogs in. Okay. They've got two new military bases. I'll bring them in at the bottom of the hour or at the top of the hour. Um, they've got two new military bases and they just sent their aircraft carrier into the med. So we're getting close to that thing that conflict right there and i think what's going to happen 
next is that Russia and these northern armies are going to move against Israel to wipe it out, and it fails. God intervenes. Israel is saved. And then the and with all these deaths, you know, those wars are going to push the global economy over the edge into meltdown. So then you're going to have a, a population that is uh, in dire straits all over the world. They're, they're freaked out about the wars and how many people have died. They're freaked out about the economic situation that's, that's just uh, imploded as a result probably of these wars. And then you've got, um, a world that's crying out for peace, peace and safety. That's all they care about. They're like, uh, enough, enough. We, they beg for the treaty. Okay. So uh, it looks like the next event is, uh, uh, is the Russians coming down from the North along with Turkey, Iran, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, da, 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 and all the rest of those, you know, uh, terrorist organizations that seek the destruction of Israel. They are going to be the ones that come down. Now, uh, Isaiah 17, I think, is the trigger. Now, let's look at that. Isaiah 17. I believe this will probably be the trigger. I could be wrong about that, but it, it does give us some indicators here. In Isaiah chapter 17, now the very, is it says here in verse 1, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. It shall be a ruinous heap. Now that's already happened. The place is a ruinous heap. It's ridiculous. Okay, then you, it, but the last, let's see. Now, get this. In verse 12, woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of the nations, that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. They're going to come down against Israel like a flood. I mean, it's going to be overwhelming force coming down against Israel, okay? The nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. They're, he's going to blow their direction. They're just going to scatter like leaves in the wind. Now he's saying at be and behold, here's your trigger, okay? At evening tide trouble. Something happens one day, we don't know which one, one day soon, something happens at evening tide over there in the Middle East. And before morning he is not. I'm thinking that's Bashar al-Assad. See, Russia's there dug in. I mean, they're, they've got a firm foothold there. And they're basically taken over uh, in Syria. Behold, at evening tide trouble, and before morning he is not. Now, notice Russia is over there trying to protect Assad and keep him in power. The Western powers, which include Israel, are going to want to get rid of Assad. Now, whether it's Israel or whether it's, uh, you know, another one of the Western powers that gets rid of Assad, looks like it says, this is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. What this is saying is that overnight at some point soon, and we're going to talk about that timing too, I don't know if we're going to talk about it, even if we have to go into the next half hour, that we've got a situation where Assad is assassinated. He's taken out evening tide trouble. And before morning, he is not. 
So he's out. He's they take him out. Russia is going to be livid, and they have to save face somehow because they didn't protect Assad and. And no matter how much firepower and infrastructure they've got there, he they take the West takes him out, or Israel, one of the two. And when that happens, there, I mean, it'll. That's when things start getting real interesting, and tempers are going to flare right off the charts, and all those armies from the north are going to go. Let's just go wipe them out, and that's what we can expect next probably. And then that kind of an action with world powers uh, and, you know, setting off nukes and things is possibility. You could have nukes in, in uh, Eastern Europe. You could have nukes in Western Asia. You could have nukes go off in the Middle East, although we know Israel's not destroyed. Uh, you know, bets are all off for everything else. And so we know that these things are going to change the world as we know it. But what it looks like is that with the wars, people are freaked out, okay? Because these wars are going to kill probably 2 billion people, okay? The first round here, seal number four, okay? We're still in, we're, we're looking at the fourth seal, you know, that which is a culmination of the deaths from the second and third and fourth, which adds dis, um, disease releases and animal attacks, things that weren't always happening uh, on the level that they are now. We're seeing these symptoms of a four seal. Uh, so at this, at a certain point between now and, okay, well, Let's let's look at a little timing. Now, we, according to my theory, which may or may, it, it looks really solid, so it could be right. Okay, about mid twenty eighteen, being when our temples defiled and six seal opened, and those kind of things. Proceeding on that evidence there that leads us to that timing. Mid twenty eighteen, if we've got the temple defiled, we've got a backup to at least mid-2017 for them to start building it. Now, it may not take them that long. I'm just trying to be conservative about how long it could take them to build the temple. So we're backing up here to when, when is Russia coming against Israel? That's what we're after here, okay? So we've got backing up to, to mid-2017. They have to be building the temple by then conservatively. Okay, it, it might not take them a year, but it might. Who, who knows? But that's my guesstimate. Mid-2017. Well, to start building the temple, there has to be a treaty. So back up just a little bit more, and we have to have a treaty somewhere between... <sighs> somewhere, if they start building mid-2017, they would have to have a treaty by, what, uh, end of the second quarter? Uh, 2017. So they'd have to have a treaty somewhere, maybe uh, what, April, uh, May, somewhere in there. I'm guesstimating. Okay. And then let's back up a little more. We have an economic meltdown that is going to come before the treaty is what it looks like. Okay. Because I think between war and famine and economic collapse, that's going to put the people in a mood to sign a treaty. A war-weary, uh, financially broke world is going, ah, uh, enough. Treaty, treaty, please, peace, peace. They're crying, please, peace and safety. Give us something here. So the, that's what leads to the treaty. So it, prior to the treaty... It, it, this is all a guesstimate on my part. You realize that, right? It's an educated guesstimate, but it is still a, a guesstimate nonetheless. But I, I think our, our dates in 2018 are solid. If we move back that year to mid-2017 for them to start building the temple, prior to that, you have to have the treaty. Prior to that, you have to have the economic meltdown. 
prior to that, you have to have the wars where where Russia comes down against Israel, which means Russia has to come down against Israel sometime between now and the end of the first quarter 2017. And that's if, if it's, you know, a lightning fast war and only lasts, you know, a few days. <laughs> right now we've got, let's see, this is September, end of September, October, November, December, January, February, March. April, somewhere in there. So we're looking at six to seven months until the treaty. At the latest. At the latest. Okay. I'm always looking at the very latest it can be. Six or seven months. And we're looking at economic meltdown uh, globally and the wars where Russia comes against Israel prior to the economic meltdown. So it looks like the very next event we need to expect is for Russia, Iran, Turkey, Hezbollah, and all those other turkeys to move down. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Let's bring the turkeys down <laughs> against Israel and roast them. <laughs> Have you guys got any questions in the chat room? Let me come over here and say hi to you guys. <laughs> oh, Janine says, Lisa, when Israel flees, is that when the scales fall from their eyes and then they will see Jesus, their Savior? Uh, I think it's possible, sister, that when Israel flees... <laughs> You crack me up, sis. Okay. When Israel flees, <laughs> that's at the midpoint. Okay? And that's right. The word says that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles have come in. That's the midpoint where our, our evacuation is. That's where the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So as soon as the uh, Gentiles are evacuated, Israel is able to see the truth. Well, uh, we'll be right back after this. Don't go.